Hunters, welcome to Wild Hearts. Now this game is actually quite exciting and as an avid Monster Hunter fan, I've really enjoyed it so far. Now unfortunately I wasn't given an early copy so I'll be working hard to get some tutorials out for you guys in the next couple of days. In the upcoming videos I'll try and work on showcasing the mechanics and combos of the weapons and later on once I've reached endgame I will release future videos talking about these skill trees and which ones are most ideal for which playstyles. So today we're going to be taking a look at the combos for the bladed Wagasa. This is a super cool parry style weapon. Quite honestly, there's very few games that actually use this kind of weapon. Although I do recall it in an episode of Naruto. So it's kind of cool to see in a monster hunting type game. So this weapon is a pretty up close and personal weapon with a pretty heavy reliance on parrying. If you played any of the Dark Soul games before or just a lot of Monster to Rise, you like the counter weapons, this weapon will get you feeling really excited. So without further ado, let's grab a wire bug and- Wait, hold on. There's no wire bugs. Um, um, gliders? Gliders? Or a zipline? Karakuri? One of those two. You can grab that. There's a lot of ways to move in this game. It's kind of cool. Okay, okay. Before we get started, here are the keybinds that I changed for PC just for this weapon specifically. Obviously, if you're on controller, you can just skip on by. So let's start with the overall mechanic of this weapon. The bottom left has a gauge that you must fill. As you can see, it's split into three levels which correlate to higher damage and also unlocks more power in certain skills. So you can kind of compare that to the long sword from Monster Hunter. Your goal throughout a hunt is to maintain the orange level three version of the gauge and different attacks give different amounts of gauge energy. I'll mention their energy levels as we go along. Now as long as you're getting damage, the energy gauge will not deplete. If you don't attack for 7 seconds, the energy will start to drain fairly quickly from your weapon. But of course, any attack after this will stop the depleting and give you back some energy. Now let's talk about the basic attacks. Also to note, since this game is on PC, Xbox and PlayStation, I'll note on screen the button correlation for a specific skill. Attack 1 is your basic attack doing left click X or square. 5 times will do a spin dance combo. Very straightforward attack, lowest damage combo for sure and it generates a medium amount of energy basically because of multi hits. Attack 2 is the middle mouse button Y or triangle. This attack is a much cooler attack. It's a 2 step attack, the reverse lunge followed by a plunging comet. Basically this is your skill to bring you in and out of the air. Hitting middle mouse button from the ground will send you into a spiral at the target and if you make contact, you will do 3 hits and then be released backwards into the air. If you are already in the air, hitting that attack too will bring you back down to the ground and you'll make contact and do 3 more hits. The attack of coming down is known as the plunging combat and it will show up later on in this video. The primary focus of this attack is really to move you from ground to air and vice versa. So as a result, it gives the least amount of energy to fill your gauge. Now something to note though is that this does help you move and cover ground. So if you're ever in a situation where you need to cover a small distance to kind of catch up to the monster, this attack too is a great option. Finally, while you're in the air, you also have directional control. So clicking the direction buttons or thumbsticks will let you aim where you do the plunging comet in any direction that you need. If you need to cover more ground, there is a more efficient way which I discussed in the Karakuri section. Now moving on to what I mentioned before, this weapon's primary style is a parry style weapon. It's extremely rewarding if you can focus on parrying attacks and to do so, the default button on the mouse and keyboard is F. Which is okay, but if you have a mouse that can bind F to one of your side buttons, I would recommend you do that. Unfortunately, this game does not recognize side buttons of the mouse. Very annoying. So your alternative is that you have to function or like program your mouse to basically click the F keyboard button. Having this on the mouse though will make parrying so much easier. If you're on the controllers, it's the right trigger, I believe. So RT on Xbox and R2 on PlayStation. Now this weapon has a very small parry window. The animation itself is a full circle spin from left to right. However, the parry window is actually when your Wagasa is on the left of the animation, meaning the start of the animation. This means you must click the parry button pretty much at the exact moment that you are getting hit. Too early or too late and you're going to take some damage. There isn't a lot of buffer space for the beginner weapon. As you upgrade, you'll be able to unlock skills to increase the window of parry. I've only seen one so far, so I'm sure there's more down the road. But in my opinion, if you want to learn this weapon well, Practicing with the small window and getting good 
will ensure that you never get hit when you upgrade the weapon. Now this parry is hella cool and it can be used quite frequently like literally immediately after most attacks and because it has such a tight window if you time it well the parry is very precise even between quick monster attacks. So once you get good with this weapon you become almost untouchable like here. It's crazy good in my opinion and it has a few more cool tricks since parrying is the center of the weapon. For one, you can even parry in the air. And when you get that parry, it always sends you back a little bit so it kind of gives you some distance from the monster so you're pretty safe from most attacks. So again, wherever you are, you can initiate this parry. The only time you can't activate it immediately is right after a parry if you miss the parry. Kind of like the consequence for not actually being successful with the parry so you just gotta wait till the animation ends and then you can parry again. On top of this, the parry can also be initiated from Sheath. So if you're running around, sliding, or just finished healing and find yourself in a spot where you're going to get hit, you do not need to draw your weapon. Simply click the parry button and you will go straight into the parry and that'll keep your weapon out, which then from there you can go into two main attacks. Another thing to note about the parry is that while the parry window isn't as long as the spin animation, it's still a 360 degree parry. So you can see here that I'm facing away from the training bear, but I still get the parry off. This is the part that makes the parry so so good. In any hunt, even if you're moving away or get thrown out of position, you can still parry and save yourself even if you aren't facing the monster. The trade-off for parrying without facing the monster though is that it doesn't count it as a parry but it counts it as a dodge. So any follow-up attack that you do will be a dodge follow-up attack, not a parry follow-up attack. Now that's not the worst thing in the world, I will discuss the dodge follow-up attacks in a little bit. But essentially if you ever parry while facing away from the monster, what you want to do is attack with attack 2, not attack 1. Okay, we'll get into dodges later but let's finish parrying. You have two attacks after parrying while facing the monster. Hitting attack 1 will send you into a short ranged falcon fury attack. Hitting attack 2 will send you into a long 20 tatami attack which will bring you very close to the monster. Both are very high damage attacks so if the situation allows, try your best to get some damage immediately after a parry. Attack 2 is one of my favorites because it will send you flying towards the monster so it's a very ideal for you to parry, get pushed back a little bit, and then you can retarget a monster weak spot and then kind of just drill straight towards them. Now since the parry is the main mechanic of the weapon, it's pretty natural that the parry also gives the most energy for the energy gauge. Three parries and you'll already be in the orange zone. This is literally the most efficient way to gain energy gauge, especially with monsters with multi hits before an opening. You might as well parry, parry, parry and get that energy. So that concludes the rundown of parrying and basic attack, let's start looking into more complex attacks. The Trace Star attack is the most efficient method to gain gauge energy. How you accomplish this is by activating your parry but not actually parrying. Instead you do attack 1. If your gauge is in the blue, you click attack 1 3 times and you do the parry again to reset the combo. However, once you reach the yellow gauge, your attack changes and adds a fourth step. Clicking a fourth time will throw your Gasa at the monster a few inches in front of you and it'll start spinning furiously dealing massive multi-hit damage. Then it'll float back into your hands. It's a sick attack and it's one of the highest dealing damage combos for this weapon. At the final orange gauge, this initial combo gets cut short and you just do one attack before throwing your Gasa out. So you're super quick cutting to the chase of just dealing some large damage. So huge damage comes out of this and it's just so satisfying to see. Like it's so sick to just throw that Wagasa out, get a bunch of hits and then catch it again. Now of course this does come with a cost of an animation delay. It will take you a hot minute to finish that attack and you really can't do much until you would catch the Wagasa again. That includes parrying because of course you've let go of your parry weapon. So be sure to be careful when using this. Make sure the monster is knocked or it's just finished a big attack or it's distracted with other teammates, basically when you know you have some time before the next attack. One final note about the Trace Star attack, notice how fast it goes from yellow to orange. Even if you don't use Trace Star to level up blue, going from yellow to orange in this attack is definitely the fastest way to get there. So even if you lose orange from time to time during the hunt, if you can still be in yellow and use this attack, you will go straight back to orange. 
Now there is a skill that occurs when you click attack 2 right after parrying but not parrying. This is a movement skill that launches you forward but deals no damage. I would not recommend using this skill at all. Parrying without success uses up stamina meaning every time you want to do the tray start you have to use up a bit of stamina leaving you less to dodge with. It's not a problem if you can parry well, but some attacks are just not good to parry so you have to make sure you have some stamina left over at all times to dodge since dodging is a very key mechanic in Wild Hearts. This movement skill does move you forward quite a bit, but there's a much more efficient method to move forward with the Spring Karakuri which I'll discuss later on. Now speaking of dodging, there are attacks that you can follow up a dodge with. Dodging on the, on the mouse and keyboard, I changed it to control, it was just easier for me. On Xbox, it's the B button, and on the PlayStation, it's Circle. Now after a dodge, you can hit Attack 1, and that'll do a Concealed Slash, a quick double hit attack. Pretty strong attack, but it's not a combo attack, it's just a one set of hits. If you're in the Yellow Gauge, this becomes the Butterfly Slice, which is a quick four hit attack. And at Orange Gauge, this becomes a quick seven hit attack, very similar to the Star Final Form. However, you don't let go of the Wagasa, it just kind of spins and hits some damage. As a result, it's just much quicker because you don't have to like wait to catch it. So with these three in mind though, these are good if you have some openings to get some quick damage after a dodge. They are stronger than regular hits, but they're not ideal to use constantly because dodging also takes up a lot of stamina, and you need to conserve your stamina just in case you need to dodge an attack. Additionally, while these give good energy gauge, the Trace Star is still more efficient simply because it is a multi-step combo, versus these dodge attacks which are single animations after a dodge. So stamina wise, this is just really good to use when you have a successful dodge from the monster and you see a chance to return some quick damage. If you dodge and hit attack 2, you do a quick return lunge. Now this is similar to most attack 2's where you lunge forward spinning your uh, Wagasa, but you don't go into the air with this one. At yellow, this becomes a Prey Skewer which is a 3 hit attack, and at orange, this becomes a 7 hit screw lunge. Now this is very strong and I'd recommend using this if you ever dodge backwards and then there's an opening. The screw lunge will get you right back into the fight and get some good damage. So just a little example here, if you guys are attacking the monster and you see a reason to just dodge backwards, you can dodge backwards and then immediately go right back in after the attack. It is a very quick combo, very specific for when you're trying to fit in damage in a very small window. Many monsters have ground attacks that burst from the floor and you can use this backwards dodge to just clear them and then jump right back into the fight with the attack. So that's it for the main ground attacks that I wanted to cover. I want to make a quick note on aerial attacks here. Aerial attacks are very similar to normal attacks as well. You have an aerial spin dance which is again weak but many quick hits simply by clicking attack 1. Attack 2 will of course bring you back to the ground with a plunging combat as I mentioned before. No matter how you get into the air, attack 2 will always bring you back down. Ideally, if you have space, using the plunging attack to return to the ground is best so you can get some extra damage while landing. The main one that I want to show you guys here is the Savage Dance. Now this is an attack that occurs when you parry in the air without successfully parrying. It's the aerial equivalent of the Trace Star attack. If you parry without parrying, you kind of go into this like floating stance. You kind of just like keep yourself hovering for a second. Then if you click attack one a single time, you will launch into a multi-hit attack animation that keeps going until it's done. It's a very cool attack, definitely more useful against bigger monsters with wider areas to hit rather than thin build monsters. It can definitely be a good skill in a group as well if there's somebody else distracting the monster you know, you can quickly launch yourself into the air, do this strong multi-hit combo, gain some energy, all the while the monster is kind of like looking away from you. It's very ideal if a monster has like a weak spot on the top of their back and they're like a large monster, you can use this to get on top of them and get behind them and then do a quick combo on their back. Plus, it's a sick looking move in the air. Honestly, I don't think you can ask for much more. Okay, so that's pretty much all you need to know for the multi-step attacks. Let's add in the unique part of this game, the Karakuri. Now the Karakuri lets you get much more advanced with your attacks, with mobility and status Karakuris. I won't discuss the status ones since they are pretty much the same for all weapons, but mobility attacks change for each weapon. One of the most simple basic Karakuri attacks is simply climbing on top of the boxes and jumping into an attack. For the Wagasa, this attack is the same for both attack 1 and 2, a plunging comet. The exact same as when you're airborne and do attack 2, 
the plunging combat will be the same. Of course, as with all weapons, if you jump from a 3 stack Karakuri, you do higher damage than if you jump from a 2 or a 1 stack. For the Bladed Wagasa though, the Spring Karakuri is actually one of the more important Karakuris. The Spring gives you a lunge forward. Now if you use attack 1 or 2 while you are lunging forward, you do a mix of a Prey Skewer and 20 Tatami attacks. This is hella strong damage and it gives you an extra boost through the air. So this is the skill I was referring to earlier in this video about granting you movement. If you want to move away from the monster quickly to heal or something, simply drop down a spring, launch yourself away from the enemy, and then use this attack to create even more distance from the monster. Of course the opposite is also true if you want to catch up to a monster, drop a spring, lunge forward, and then attack with the spiral sending you straight towards the monster and dealing some damage. You can see here in the clips that you can also use this spring Karakuri while you are running. It's a very smooth transition for running to just putting it down and then lunging you forward and then you can click attack 1 or attack 2 to get that extra boost. Awesome, now the final skill that I want to mention here is when you have the glider. While gliding in the air you can launch yourself onto the monster and perform a rising comet. This will deal a strong 2 hit attack which will actually result in you being launched back into the air and from there you can do any aerial attack or combo that you'd like to do. Now this is great when you are entering a new zone after a monster has moved or if you're just starting a hunt. Typically it's not ideal to use during a hunt or like during a battle since the movement on the glider is quite slow and not very flexible in terms of turning speed. So ideally you don't want to be doing this unless you really have teammates or something distracting. So that's about it for the breakdown of the Vagasa attacks. As I mentioned at the start of this video, I have not completed the full game so I can't provide a, an assessment of the skill tree yet. So be sure to subscribe for when that video comes out in a couple days. If you have any comments or questions or if I missed anything, please let me know down below. And also, I really want to know what you guys think. How are you guys liking this game? Let me know in the comments below. I have genuinely been having a lot of fun with the game and it's been really exciting to see the Monster Hunter genre in a new setting. So with that hunters, thank you so much for watching. As usual, take care, stay safe, and keep hunting. Sky Sensei is out.